morning everyone or afternoon evening well it's afternoon evening it's gone dark um i didn't get uh last night i was uh didn't do any video because it was a bit of a rush to uh try and get it done so try and get it in the dyno today which didn't happen anyway uh obviously i just concentrated on getting by it done but what i'll do is I'll explain what i've done now and i will um then explain what else i need to do left um there's not a lot left to do really um, I'm leaving starting the bike um, till I've done a few other bits because if that alarm kicks up, kicks off and I can't get it off, it's going to be noisy. Um, so actually I might do that next. I might try and start it, see if the alarm will work. Um, if not, I've got to try and strip the alarm off. It's just a matter of tracing the wires back to where they wired it in and then remove it and then I don't need the alarm system on it. I want to try and keep it on if I can, if, if it will work. Um, but the one on my trike didn't work. Uh, well, luckily enough for that, there's a plug to put unplug and then can you plug, blank and plug in on the Triumphs. Um, I'm not going to tell you where it is because, you know, who knows watching this video. Um, <clears throat> but then I have to fit another alarm to it. So, it's one of them. Anyway, um, I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you what I've done. I'm holding the camera at the moment. I'm, I'm actually on my leg today. I'll show you a little bit of my leg as well and uh, give you a bit of an idea of um, how things are basically. So um, it's weird. I'm trying to look at myself on the camera. Uh, it means I'm not looking at the camera lens. <laughs> Never mind. Right. Um, yeah, I'll turn the camera around. I'll show you my leg quickly and then we'll get on with things. Hi. Uh, I've tried to put it on stand. As you see, I am quite high up uh, from squat down. That's mid thigh. I have a carbon fiber socket, a bit of a titanium piece there, computerized knee, uh, which you can only just start getting on the NHS. A little bit of a device here to try and make me ride a bike better. This is a heel height adjustment more than anything, um, but I tend to use it to try and, because when I'm on the bike, my foot peg is pretty much in the middle of my foot rather than on the toes. So I've got this device, to press it, turn it, you see we've got another knee almost and that moves it from the center of the foot to near the toes because otherwise i do catch the floor that was one of the incidents what happened with the reason why i crashed this bike um i didn't adjust that and also what i have to do um there's an allen key at the bottom here on the other side you do i have to loosen that off and turn the whole the whole foot inwards towards my other leg so when i'm actually walking i look like i'm walking with my toes in but that helps me keep my toes away from um, the floor when you're going around left-handers and you, then you don't have to worry about anything. Any of you amputees out there who didn't particularly know, this is called a Brio and uh, it's a heel height adjustment. But basically, instead of putting it on the heel, we've put it at the bottom of the leg to create another uh, ankle. I was the first to do it, apparently. There's a few others have now done that through suggestion from the company where i got my leg from which is pace rehabilitation i went to the one originally it was cheadle it's now uh, breadbury but there is one down in chesham uh, if you're looking for anything private and they are very good um i also have a hydraulic ankle so my foot if you go downhill it'll adjust to where it goes um i did have an electronic ankle which was called in the land but the thing is it broke so now i've just got uh, an echelon vt which has got a shock absorber in it, so it sort of helps uh, bumps and that. Um, so yeah, that's a Brio heel height adjustment. And don't forget, um, turn the Allen key in. Uh, turn the Allen key, adjust your, your foot in, and then tighten it up. Mark on your shaft. I've got a carbon fibre shaft, only a little one there. Mark on your shaft where you need to put it back for walking. Otherwise, you'll be playing about with it until you get it right. But anyway, that's what I've done. Um, I'm going to show you now what I've done to the bike last night and I can then uh, continue with what I'm doing tonight. <clears throat> Hi, you see I've put the carbon fibre rear on uh, with smoked uh, LED indicators and I've got a smoked LED uh, rear light unit. And the V piece here, because I'm running uh, what I call a butty box, a top box, I have to cut it to fit. And this is my original one at the moment. I've got a carbon fiber one, but I'm not sure whether I want to cut it down yet. So I've just put my seat on as normal. 
Um, on my seat, I've got uh, a different cover on, or ZZR on it in blue piping. Uh, you can get them anywhere on eBay. Say like tanks on. Uh, tank uh, carbon cover, side cover. There's a couple of little clips that clip in here. Um, and one up here. It was quite difficult to get the other side one on. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to do put the other side one on just yet. Um, I've recently glued the throttle handle so it doesn't move. I've got to connect up the heated grips. And what I'm doing here is because I'm running the Brembo master cylinder. We have a different micro switch for the brake. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attach some wires in there with bullet connectors on. So I can connect this, but I'm not cutting the original off. You can cut the original off and just put bullet connectors right on the end. And then put bullet connectors on this side if you wanted to. But I'm going to put a bit of wire in there that comes off and then I'm going to take that off out of the way. Um, so the, the brake is rock solid now. It hardly goes in. <coughs> Clutch done that for now i have got my new piece there and i'm going to have a look i've got a master cylinder uh sorry a reservoir from a thumb brake that was fitting to the h2 which the pipe and instead of coming out that way it comes straight down now i might be able to fit that if i can fit that i'll steal that from that and i'll order another one of them uh i so say he's a grips is on uh, i've got no screen on but my local garage has ordered me a screen which will be there tomorrow so I think he's going to fit the screen before he does the MOT. Um, yeah, I'm going to put uh, wind mirrors back on. I'll took the wind mirrors off to try and get the side panels on because they're very, very tricky. The uh, clip that goes in there is always the prob problematic one. Um, the way these panels go on is a very, very weird way of doing things, really. I say I've got the cockpit panels to go on, which I'll do after I've done the wiring, the last bit of wiring. Um, I've put the battery in, and I've put the earth on. I've had to get get myself an earth because I lost my earth, so it's a little bit longer than normal. I will order the original. I've got an earth strap that goes from the battery to the other side, and I've, I've connected the, the lives here. I've got my uh, charge wire, um, your Pro Shift one. Um, but I'm not connecting the earths until I'm ready to start it or ready to sort out the alarm and that. I'm just going to do a couple of other little bits before I do that. I'm just going to sort that wiring out, connect all that wiring up. Um, and then I'll probably have a look at that. And if it will work, jobs are done. If it won't work, we're in a noisy environment. Um, I'd say it's pretty much the same the other side. So it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, as you know, uh, God knows how many weeks ago, well, I had a two-week break, didn't I? So one, two, three, say five weeks ago, that was just a chassis. Um, but in time of me actually doing it, you're probably talking three weeks ago. Um, I've got my number plate to put on. Um, I will not show the, my, what my number plate is here, in case you get the uh, terrible people out there that might just want to uh, clock the number plate for some reason. Um, so that's pretty much it, and I will get back to you shortly. Hi, right, I have uh, pretty much gone and done everything ready for the bike now. And um, as I say, oh, I put the rest of the carbon on, put battery cover on, battery on, bike starts, and it starts great. I have had to tick over a couple of times, I've had it at 60 degrees C as a heat soak, and then I let it go, uh, drop. Then I've done it at 70 and let it drop. And now I've just done it up to the fan kicks in at 95. Fans kicking to make sure the fans kick in. I've uh, checked and topped the oil up once. I'll check it again tomorrow once it's all settled. Um, as I say, uh, the carbon rears were a little bit awkward with the uh, gaps here. I had a problem with the rear light not working. And um, that was a broken connector, which I salvaged the one off the other bike. Um, and I also then um, uh, put like bullet connectors and connected it on here because as I said the other bike we don't need a rear light for uh, for racing um, so that took a little bit of time to sort out because I'd take the light unit off to have a look because there was also one of the pins and this LED light had been pushed backwards into the light so that was the eighth pin so even when I'd done the plug which was definitely damaged the pin was, was uh, a bit dodgy, so to get to it, I had to 
take the light unit off to try and get to it, get to it and uh, fix it properly. So that was that done. That was a bit of a problem there. I had to change the relay for the indicators because I've got LED rear. I've got LED rear indicators, smoked ones. Now, I thought I ordered LED front smoked ones, but when I got them, they were another set of rear. So I put my standards back on, on the front. I do want to try and get some smoked front ones, if anyone knows where there is any. I'd rather look around and not seen too success successful just yet. Um, I've put there's Kawasaki stickers on, one there, one the other side, badges. Uh, the ZZR14 one on this side, I don't seem to find. I've got the other one, um, unless I've only ordered one, because it looks like the way they were packaged up, it was weird. Because I had one Kawasaki on its own, and I had a ZZR14 and a Kawasaki taped together as one. So whether they were out of stock, I need to check my orders to see if anything's on back order. I have uh, connected up the heated grips, uh, done a brake light switch for this because they have a different micro switch for the brake light switch for the front brake. Um, my Hyper Pro steering dampener, I've always used them since racing. Uh, and my Tom Tom sat nav mount and mounted up. Even though I forgot all about it, I had LED, uh, sorry, um, titanium nice blue bolts in these before. But then I forgot I was putting the mount on. So at the moment we've only got stainless. But I'll uh, I'll get some titanium. I'll measure the length and get some titanium thingy. Uh, what's the names? Um, reservoir cap. Now there's one thing I've forgotten to put on. But I don't think it's essential for the MOT. It's just a little um, clip. Stops it backing off. Um, some bikes I've seen don't have them. Some do. Uh, in racing, we don't have them, um, so um, I'm not too sure. So we'll have to have a look. Um, speak to the MOT guy tomorrow. He's got a screen coming for me tomorrow to fit, so the screen will be done tomorrow. I've done the rear tire pressure. Can't get to the valve for the front one. Uh, on these, it says on the on the manual, it says forty two forty two. Um, uh, as I say, my mate Sam says, sometimes running a slightly lower one may give you a bit of better grip for the corners. Just depends how you're riding the bike. If you want it an all-rounder, I'd stay with the 42-42. If you want to scratch a bit, you could go a bit lower, but it, it will, won't be too great, you know, for, uh, sports, uh, like, constantly touring all the time. It'll, it might just be a bit too soft for that. Um... As I say, I've got rear foot pegs on. Um, at the moment, I've just got my standard seat cover I had from last year. There are 515 as my race number. Um, and I was using this bike um, for a bit of my... Um, just to get some points when my drag bike had gone down. Um, I killed the engine at some point, so I used this. Um, I don't. Have to, I think the blue and the carbon looks is not too bad actually. It's quite. It's turned out quite nice actually. I was looking as I say, looking at it now. I'm thinking, hmm. Um, I'll give you a video of how it sounds tomorrow because it's a bit late now. I have just had it running, but I didn't have my camera to hand, um, so I didn't do it. But when we load it up in the van tomorrow, um, I'll give you a bit of a thing of. How it's going there done. And um, what I did notice because I put titanium bolt here, that was a bit too long and the chain was catching it, so I've just cut it down and put it back in. Uh, I've left this cover off for now until I check the coolant tomorrow. because uh, I've I've added the thermostats kicked in and the uh fans are kicked in, so it should have uh, basically bring the uh bubbles all around around the system and out, hopefully. Um, mirrors, yeah, are on. Um, clutch switch, I've left the way it is, which means um, you can only start it in neutral. Because how you, what you'd normally do if you stalled it, you pull the clutch in, it'll arc them two out, and then it, you'll be able to start. But I'd, I'd have to start in neutral at all times if anything happens. What I could, I'm thinking of doing potentially let's put a little switch somewhere on the panel which can link and arcs that off 
So you can just like flick the switch if you installed or whatever, flick the stitch switch, start it up, flick it back. Um, I suppose it didn't matter whether it was constantly on anyway. It just means that you could inadvertently start it um, when it's in gear without the clutch being operated. So you could end up have a bit of a mishap on that, um, which I wouldn't advise anyone to do. But because I've been racing and I'm supposed, supposed to be more experienced, you know, than Joe Blogs down the road is when it comes to fuel. And that also, your clutch switch, when that is um, in neutral, um, it does have a few features where... Um, it helps to um, makes the engine run safe, makes, makes it run a bit richer and stuff like that. It's basically for anyone, you know, you get any idiots as I call it, who just want to be there thrashing the bike, bouncing it off the rev limiter and never whatever, in neutral or whatever, or when the clutch is pulled in. That will, um, as I say, also give a signal back to the ECU. Um, I've had it on good authority from my mate Sam who does a uh, fuel mapping. And then that will um, give it a safe mode sort of thing. So even if you map it and you've mapped it pretty close to, you know, the target on the air fuel ratio. And um, that will still override it and make it a bit richer to make it safe. Um, at the moment it smells rich. Um, I'm not too sure which way it's going to be because uh, it might be actually lean further up the end rather than rich because of the fact that we've oh yeah that me uh <laughs> my uh t t a tire gauge thing there is to remind me to do the front tire before uh, before i go tomorrow um that um digital one i only use digital ones now um especially with racing because i can get the same consistency um i don't like using um ones on an airline to actually gauge from and I don't like the, to use, um, what's the name ones? Um, the, the old school ones where you put it on and it pushes it up because resistance can get stronger or less over time, especially if you've had it in a you know, watery environment, it's got rusty. So the digital ones is what I use all the time, get the same consistency. So um, everything seems uh, okay. So far, we've got no leaks. No leaks at all, so that's good. Um, though that fluid there is actually um, uh, thread lock, and there was a little bit of uh, brake fluid from when I was bleeding the brakes. But yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Um, next one, I'm hoping uh, if I get a chance, I might try and see if I can do a video when it's on the dyno. If I can't, um, I might have to just go back and do do a dyno run when he's finished um, to get a video. Uh, it all depends what else we've got planned for tomorrow when we're getting close to Christmas. Right, I'll get off now and leave it to you. Leave it to you. Yes, there you go. Thank you for watching. Right. Good morning. Just want to show you how um, this electric stand works. Um, as you see, I connected it up. Uh, I have the switch buttons there, green, I always see for go, which means the side stands up, and red for stop, the side stands down. So, if I press the red button now, you can watch this, you can see what happens to it. It's a bit slow. Not too bad. Uh, battery's a little bit low, so I'm just going to crank it up.